Chapter 9 Paul defends his apostleship and limits his liberty. 9.1-27 Paul uses himself as an example of helping weaker brothers, the Corinthians, by not insisting on his rights. 9.01 AM I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are not ye my work in the Lord? Paul asks questions to make them think. Am I not an apostle sent by God with a message? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Acts 9 verses 17 and 27, 22 colon 6 21, 26 colon 12 18. In fact, Paul was the last one to see the Lord Jesus, 15 colon 8. Is not your salvation proof of my work in the Lord? To not believe Paul was the apostle Jesus Christ sent to the body of Christ is to deny what Christ is doing today, John 13 verse 20. Christ appointed Paul to be his apostle and personally taught him what he needed to know and relate. Paul did not learn about his ministry from another man, Gal, 1 11, 12. The Lord Jesus Christ kept him separate from the 12 apostles to Israel on purpose. Paul magnified his office of being the apostle of the Gentiles, Rom, 11 13. Paul was the first person into the body of Christ. He is the pattern for us to follow, 1 Tim. 1 15, 16, because Paul was a blasphemer of the Holy Ghost, Matt, 12 31, 32, Acts 7 verse 58, 1 Tim, 1 13, he could only have been saved if Christ put him in an entirely new dispensation, 1 Tim, 1 15, 16, if Paul had not been saved, but was accursed, the dispensation his kinsmen according to the flesh were and may have been able to continue, Rom, 9 colon 3, 11 11, 12. 2 If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you, for the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. Even if I am not considered an apostle to others, at least I am to you, for you are my seal, stamp of certificate, to confirm my apostleship in the Lord. Paul gave them the gospel Christ entrusted to him, 1 Tim. 111, knowing it had the power to save them, for 15, just like his encounter with Christ had saved him. Paul was undeserving of Christ's loving sacrifice, and so are we. 3. Mine answer to them that do examine me is this, for have we not power to eat and to drink? 5. Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles, and as the brethren of the Lord, and Cephas? Paul had to deal with factions who rebelled against his apostolic authority, power, they examined Paul for proof that Christ was speaking in him, 2 Cor, 13 colon 3, my. Answer to those who examine me to find out if I am really Christ's apostle to the Gentiles, just as much as the twelve were to Israel, is this, do not Barnabas and I have the same authority as the other apostles, the brothers of the Lord, Matt. 1355, and see fast to eat and drink at the expense of the church? Paul and Barnabas could have married, but they chose to curtail this power and remain single for the sake of the gospel. 6. Were I only in Barnabas, have not we power to forbear working? Is it only Barnabas and me who are not entitled to stop working and be paid by you to preach? There is no biblical record that Barnabas went to Corinth. Paul reminds them that the Holy Ghost sent him and Barnabas to the Gentiles as a whole with a message, Acts 13 verse 2. 7. Who goeth a warfare any time at his own charges? Who planteth a vineyard, and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Or who feedeth a flock, and eateth not of the milk of the flock? What soldier goes to war at his own expense? Who plants and does not eat the fruit? Who feeds a flock and does not partake of the milk? 8. Say I these things as a man? Or saith not the law the same also? 9. For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Doth God take care for oxen? 10. Or saith he it altogether for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he that ploweth should plow in hope, and that he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of his hope. Do I say these things only as a man? Or does the law say the same thing also? What God said about not muzzling the oxen that tread out the corn in the law of Moses was written for our good, Deuteronomy. 25 colon 4, 1 Tim. 5 18, God said this so that both he that plows, prepares the soil to plant, and he that threshes, reaps, should both share in the harvest.
11. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? If we have sown spiritual things to you, is it too much to ask that we would reap from you material compensation? 12. If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. If others have used their authority to be paid by you, are we not even more entitled to be paid? Paul had heard that the Corinthians were supporting other apostles and preachers. Nevertheless, we have not exercised our right to be supported for this work. Paul suffered hardships to pay his own way by making tents, so he would not hinder the gospel of Christ. 13. Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple? And they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar. Do you not know that the men that serve in the temple live by eating the temple food? And those who serve at the altar share in eating the offerings? Paul further drives home his point by making parallels with the law, perhaps for the sake of the Jews in the assembly. 14. Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. Likewise, the Lord has ordained that those who preach the gospel should live by being supported for preaching the gospel. We are to graciously support those who bless us spiritually. Many grace pastors today chose to support themselves like Paul. 15. But I have used none of these things, neither have I written these things, that it should be so done unto me, for it were better for me to die, than that any man should make my glorying void. But I have not used any of these entitlements, nor am I writing this so that you will pay me anything now. For I would rather die than have someone nullify or deprive me of what I can take glory in, which is serving for free. 16. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me, yea, woe is unto me, if I preach not the gospel. For I cannot take pride for preaching the gospel, for I have nothing to glory in since I am required by the Lord to do so. I have got to preach it, yes, woe is unto me if I do not preach the gospel. Christ appointed Paul and charged or ordered him to dispense Christ's instructions to the body of Christ. Paul is the due time testifier, Titus 1 verse 3. 17 For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward, but if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. For if I willingly obey the Lord and preach what Christ reveals to me I will have a reward, but if I preach reluctantly, against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me and I must declare his instruction to the body of Christ during the dispensation of grace. F. 3 1 9. Paul has no choice about his job. He was chosen by Christ to be his apostle. Acts 9 verses 15 and 16. To dispense means to distribute or give out. A pharmacy dispenses medication, a vending machine dispenses drinks and snacks, a gas station dispenses gasoline. Our instructions are found in Paul's 13 letters, Romans to Philemon. The word dispensation is found four times in the King James Bible, 1 Cor, 917 F, 110, 3 colon 2, Colossians 1 verse 25. Paul said, rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Tim, 2.15, we divide the mystery truth to the body of Christ, God's heavenly people, from the prophecy truth in the rest of the Bible, God's earthly people. It is not just a nice greeting when Paul opens his letter saying grace and peace, it is what God is dispensing today. God is not angry with anyone because Christ paid the sin debt of all mankind. The father's approval of his son's payment was proved by his son's resurrection. Death and hell could not hold his sinless son, Acts 2 verse 24. Christ paid for our sins nearly 2,000 years ago. God is not imputing our sin to us now, the father is reconciled to the world, 2 Cor. 519, but now the world needs to be reconciled to the father by believing the gospel of Christ to receive his son's righteousness so the father can forgive us and declare us justified, Acts 13 verses 38 and 39, 1 Cor. 15 colon 3, 4, 2 Cor. 5 20, 21. Christ interrupted prophecy and inserted the mystery. Our dispensation is delaying the tribulation, Jacob's trouble, Leviticus. 26, Jeremiah 30 verse 7, Dan, 9 colon 24 dash 27. 18, what is my reward then? 
Verily that, when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. What is my reward then, if I cannot do anything but preach it? I will have a reward if I preach the gospel of Christ, his instruction to the body of Christ, free of charge, so I do not abuse my power in the gospel. If Paul received financial compensation, he could perhaps be tempted to abuse his apostolic authority and take a bribe. 19 For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. For though I have not taken a bribe from anyone, I have made myself a servant unto all, that I may gain more converts. 20 And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews, to them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law, during Acts Paul was notifying the Jews of God's dispensational shift, and he did many Jewish things to save the Jews, he did the same signs as Peter, he also took a vow, water baptized, made temple sacrifices. This letter was written in Acts 19. 21 To them that are without law, as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. Paul was as without the law to save the Gentiles, but he was still not. Without the law to God, but under the law of Christ, Rom. 722, 8,2-4. In this dispensation, with his spirit in us, the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, Rom. 8,4. When Paul is in the spirit, then Christ who kept the law of God perfectly is living his life through him, and he can love the Lord God with all his might and his neighbor as himself, Rom. 12,1, 2, 13,8-10. We naturally keep the law of God as adult sons out of love and gratitude to God, not out of fear of punishment, 1 Tim, 1 colon 9, dot. 22 to the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak, I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Paul said, to the weak Jews and Gentiles in Pauline doctrine I became as weak. I have made myself all things to all men, that I might by all means save some into our group. Unbelievers will be judged at the great white throne and cast into the lake of fire, Revelation 20 verses 10 to 15. Hell is much worse than we can ever imagine, and heaven is much more wonderful. Paul was very learned in the scriptures but said, seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech, 2 Cor. 3.12, he carefully used plain speech and tact to make contact with people so he could win them to Christ. Paul was born a Jew, so he used that to win the Jews, and Paul was a Roman citizen, so he used that to win the Gentiles. He was uniquely suited as the perfect apostle to the body of Christ made up of both Jews and Gentiles. 23 And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. Paul made himself a servant of all so he might save some and have rewards for his service at the JSOC. Paul worked hard to spread the good news and invited the Corinthians to work to build the body of Christ as part of the team. Israel's dietary laws, water baptism, and circumcision do not apply to those who will live in heaven. In contrast to bodybuilding, Israel's program involves nation building. Israel had to be circumcised so they were not cut off, Genesis 17 verse 14, and a kingdom of priests, Exodus 19 verses 5 and 6, ISA. 61 colon 6, 1 Peter 2 verse 9, Revelation 5 verse 10, that washed in water that they die not, Exodus 30 verse 21. 24 Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run, that ye may obtain. Do you not know that in a race, all runners compete, but only one receives the prize? Paul encourages us to run to win rewards at the JSOC. We serve others on earth by sharing the gospel and right division. We are not competing against each other but against time. 25 And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. Paul used an illustration from the Greek games familiar to the reader, for the Isthmian Games, similar to the Olympics, were held near Corinth. Every contestant that strives to be the victor is moderate in all things. They discipline themselves and train hard to win a laurel wreath that will soon wither, but we work to obtain an incorruptible crown, a job with responsibility in heaven. Paul wisely works hard so he can have a quantity of saved and edified souls. God wants us to work with him and have some quality work at the judgment seat of Christ, 
two core. 510, we are in training here, for reigning there. 26, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. 27, but I keep under my body, and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Therefore, I do not run without a definite purpose, or train as a boxer beating the air. But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection unless, by any means, I should do what I tell others not to do. Paul does not eat meat in the temple of Aphrodite, where the temple girls and idolatry are, or ask for compensation so he will not be a castaway. Castaway means disqualified or to lose reward at the JSOC. Paul lives his life on purpose, calculating out what is the best use of his time for Christ. We can be castaways if do not follow Jesus Christ according to Paul's mystery. After we are saved, Christ motivates us to do the work he has prepared us for, f. 2.10, which is to save the lost and edify the saved, 1 Tim. 2.4, Paul does not allow himself to get distracted from serving God, and neither should we. Our life is a race to do as much as we can for Christ and others so we may earn a reward. We should live with our eternal retirement plan in mind. The fight of faith is a fight worth fighting for. 1 Corinthians 10 verses 12 to 13. Wherefore let him that think he standeth take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man, but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Chapter 10 Do not be like Israel, help the weak, and save souls 10 colon 1 15 flee from the sins Israel fell into in the past. 10 colon 16 11 colon 1 believers must be separated unto God. We cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils, the goal is to save souls. 10 colon 1 Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant, how that all our fathers were under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, two, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, three, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, four, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Israel is a warning to continue to worship Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, Rom. 1625, Paul does not want the lost Gentiles to miss out on the opportunity for salvation and rewards because of some of the bad choices and poor conduct of some believers. Many in Israel under Moses failed to enter the promised land. Many Jews in the church at Corinth had come over from the synagogue next door. They realized that God had given Paul and those in that assembly Israel signs. Paul speaks as a Jew, saying our fathers identified with the group of Moses. The nation was supernaturally led and firstborn as they passed from Egypt through the Red Sea unto God on their way to the Promised Land, Exodus 4 verse 22. They were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, there is no water in this dry baptism. They all ate the same spiritual food, the manna, which was of supernatural origin, Exodus 16 verses 3 and 4, 31, PSA. 78 colon 24, 25, number. 11 colon 7 9, and they drank from Christ's wisdom, the spiritual rock that followed them. The water was of supernatural origin. Moses was to speak to the rock, a type of Christ. Water in the Bible is life eternal, Exodus 17 verse 6, John 1 colon 4, 4 14, 7 37, 38. Paul was given advanced progressive revelation and said that rock was Christ, PSA. 118 colon 22, the true believers in the church in the wilderness, Acts 7 verse 38, under Moses and God's other people the Messianic Kingdom Church, Matt. 1616, are earthly kingdom believers and had Christ as their rock. That Gentiles would be saved after Israel's rise was prophesied, ISA. 60 colon 1 3, but Paul preached Gentile salvation as a result of Israel's fall. Israel stumbled on Christ, that stone, at the cross and fell in Acts 7, Rom, 11, 11, 12. Those who believed God in prophecy, such as Adam, Abraham, Moses, Peter, and the dead tribulation saints, will be in the first resurrection and live in the kingdom on earth, Revelation 20, verse 6. But the body of Christ will live in the heavenly kingdom, 2 Tim, 
for 18.5 But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. But God was not pleased with many of Israel because of their unbelief. Paul does not want the Gentiles to fail to believe like Israel. They took part in the spiritual food and drink, but they were disqualified from entering the promised land and having eternal life with God. They had to wander in the wilderness for 40 years while that generation who did not believe died. Number 14 26 33. The 10 spies died immediately. Number 14 36 38. 6 Now these things were our examples, to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Paul said do not follow their examples so Gentiles can go to heaven and have rewards. 5 Evil Things 1. Do not lust after evil things such as eating the food in the temple where the prostitutes are C810. 2. Do not desire to worship idols 3. Neither commit fornication 4. Neither tempt Christ nor test his love for you 5. Nor murmur or complain Christ wants us to learn not to repeat Israel's poor choices. Their bad example is also repeated in the book of Hebrews as a warning to the Jews who will go through the tribulation so they will be sure to get into the millennial kingdom, Heb. 3 colon 8, 17. We should learn from their mistakes and not lust after evil things as some of them did. Those people wanted things that were outside the will of God for them at that particular time. Many were not satisfied with the manna and longed for the food in Egypt and complained. The fish cucumbers, and the melons, and the leeks, and the onions, and the garlic. But now our soul is dried away, there is nothing at all, beside this manna, before our eyes, number 11 colon 5, 6. 7 neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and rose up to play. Do not be idolaters like some of the Israelites who rose up to play, Exodus 32 verse 6. They worshipped the golden calf, Satan's attack to corrupt God's people while Moses was up on the mountain receiving the Ten Commandments from God. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, Acts 7 verse 42. Who does the molten calf represent? Right, the anointed cherub that once covered God's throne, Satan, 2 Kron, 1115, Ezek, 28 colon 14, 110, 1014, Revelation 4 verse 7. Satan did not want Israel to be God's special people. The adversary was against Moses, against Christ and the little flock, and then against Paul. 8. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Physical fornication can lead to spiritual fornication. Balaam told the king of Moab to cause his people to fornicate with the Jews to trick Israel into Baal worship of the Moabites. Thousands died, but Phinehas the priest turned away God's jealousy and wrath when he thrust a javelin through an Israelite in the act with a woman of Moab, number 25,1-18. 9. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Also do not tempt Christ as the Israelites who spoke against Moses and God's plan for them, saying, Wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? They were ungrateful for the miracle of manna saying, Our soul loatheth this light bread. Number 21,4-9 So God sent fiery serpents to bite them so that they died. Moses was commanded to make a brass serpent and put it on a pole so that anyone who was bitten who looked at it by faith, escaped and lived. 10 Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Paul warns them not to murmur as Korah did against Moses when God sent a plague, the destroyer is the Lord, that killed many, number. 14,1-4, 16, 36-50. We do not murmur against what Christ told us through Paul. 11 Now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Israel is an illustration to warn the Gentiles in mystery. If the believers in Corinth go up to the pagan temple to eat, they may destroy their Christian testimony to the lost or stumble a weak believer. We should not complain about limiting our right to do certain things such as go to a wrongly dividing church or casino. Israel ate the same spiritual food and drink, but they suffered the second death, eternal torment in the lake of fire because of their unbelief, Revelation 21 verse 8.
12. Wherefore let him that think he standeth take heed lest he fall. For this reason, let those who think they cannot fall into the temptation to sin or leave the message Christ gave to Paul, take heed. We are to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. 2 Cor. 10 colon 5, that exalts itself against Christ's message to us through Paul. Once a person is saved he cannot lose their salvation, but he can still sin and have a fruitless life without any rewards at Christ's judgment seat. 13 There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man, but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. All men experience similar temptation to sin, but God is faithful, he will not allow us to be tempted beyond what we are able, but along with the temptation will provide a way for us to escape it, that we may be able to bear it, cope with being tempted. The Corinthians' eyes were beginning to turn from the cross of Christ that saved them, to desire to look backward to the pagan feasts and practices they had left behind and forsake Pauline truth. They were playing with fire. God will warn you not to leave the grace message once you understand it. We should not go back to legalism and the flesh by claiming Israel's program, but follow Christ's instruction to his heavenly group through Paul. God will give us the grace not to succumb to this list of sins that the nation of Israel did, unbelief, lust for evil things, idol worship, lewd behavior, fornication, speaking against Christ, and murmuring. God did physical signs for Israel, 122, such as parting the rivers, sending or not sending rain, winning their battles, etc. God works spiritually in us using His Spirit, His Word, and other believers to transform us into someone we never were before, Rom. 829, 12,2, F. 4,22-24. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure, Phil. 2.13, we are not to grieve his Holy Spirit with our poor conduct. We can be tempted to go back to mixing Peter and Paul, which is to frustrate the grace of God, Gal. 2.21, and to have fallen from grace, Gal. 5.4, but right thinking, following our instructions from Christ through Paul, leads to correct conduct. God's word will only work effectually in us, one thus. 2.13, if we study it rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Tim, 2 colon 7, 15. 14 Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Paul does not want his dearly beloved Corinthians to return to the pagan idolatry that Christ set them free from, 12 colon 2. Idolatry is not following the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, Rom. 1625, with Christ's Spirit in us helping us to understand the Bible rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Tim. 215, we can be useful to God and others. The more of his word that we understand the better we are in standing for the truth against Satan who wants to conceal the gospel and the mystery. God's instruction to his heavenly people is different than his instruction to his earthly people. 15 I. Speak as to wise men, judge ye what I say. 16 The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? Paul thinks the Corinthians are wise enough to judge if he is speaking for the Lord. He speaks of our superior Lord's table. Paul taught them to remember the Lord by drinking the juice and eating the bread with Christ's sacrifice in mind, 1123. Paul asks, do we not bless the cup of blessing that represents our spiritual union with Christ's shed blood for us? The bread that we break, is it not a picture of the spiritual union we have with his sacrifice of his body on the cross? The idea that the juice and bread really are Christ's blood and body, transubstantiation, as mentioned in the Catholic and Lutheran ceremonies, is totally false and a form of idolatry, because Christ was speaking symbolically, not literally in John 6 verses 47-58. Jesus said, My Father giveth you the true bread from heaven, John 6 verse 32. The body of Christ in this verse is Christ's physical body. We worship the Lord, not the bread. We have a close intimate relationship, fellowship, with the Lord Jesus Christ, an intimate union or communion. 17 For we being many are one bread, and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. 
For we in the body of Christ being many are one bread, one body or group, for all believers are spiritual partakers of the one bread, Christ's sacrificed body. How can we be certain that the first one bread does not include Peter and his group? Because in Galatians 6 verse 16 Paul makes a distinction between the two groups, also see Matt. 1928, Christ pleaded with the Father to forgive them on the cross, Luke 23 verse 34, and reduced their sentence from murder to manslaughter. Jesus Christ also pleaded with the Father to give the Jews one more year to believe, Luke 13 verses 6 to 9. God gave Israel a one-year extension of mercy to believe on their Messiah through Peter and his group. When Stephen preached, he essentially said, your time is up. Israel as a nation stumbled at the cross, then fell in Acts 7 at the stoning of Stephen. Peter and his group did not fully know that their program was interrupted, put on hold, closed to new recruits, and postponed until Paul told them in Acts 15 verses 1 to 29 and Gal. 2 colon 7-9. That is when James, Cephas, Peter, and John saw and perceived that Christ had begun a new unprophesied ministry through Paul. Paul's my gospel is justification by faith, Rom. 5 colon 1, it was checkmate at the cross, because Calvary allowed the Father to impute his son's righteousness to two groups, Peter's. And Paul's. During Acts, Paul went to the Jews scattered abroad to tell them that Jesus is the Christ and if they want to be saved for them to believe the glorious gospel he preaches, Acts 13 verses 38 and 39, 1 Cor. 15 colon 3, 4, 2 Cor. 4 colon 3, 4, 5 21, Gal. 2 colon 2. By one cross Christ saved two groups, those who will live on earth and those who will live in heaven. Israel failed repeatedly just as the Gentiles did at the Tower of Babel. God proved that both the earthly and the heavenly believers need his son's imputed righteousness, wrong. 3 colon 21 26. Satan wants to conceal both the gospel of justification by faith, wrong. 5 colon 1, and the mystery Christ has revealed through Paul. We live in a new and different dispensation formerly kept secret. 18 Behold Israel after the flesh, are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? 19 What say I then, that the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? 20 But I say, that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils, and not to God, and I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Paul said, Look at Israel in the past. Did not the priests and eat what had been offered to God on the altar? What am I saying then? Am I saying that the idol has spiritual power? Am I saying that the partakers of the food offered to idols are in spiritual union with the idols? That is not what I am saying, but I am saying that the Gentiles sacrifice food to devils and not to God. Devils, the fallen angels or gods in the second heaven, are behind the idols. God let the nations worship all the host of heaven, Deuteronomy. 419, 28, 32 colon 17. Paul gives his verdict by the apostolic authority vested in him, I do not want you to have any fellowship with the devils behind the idols. 21 Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord, and the cup of devils, ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table, and of the table of devils. 22 Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? When Israel sacrificed peace offerings to the golden calf and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt, Exodus 32 verses 4 and 21, they provoked God to jealousy and his fierce wrath was kindled against his people. The Lord wants to keep what rightfully belongs to him. No one is stronger than him. You cannot drink the cup and eat the bread in remembrance of the Lord's sacrifice for us and the cup and food of devils at the same time. Jesus Christ said we cannot serve two masters, Matt. 6.24 Paul warned the Gentiles, the wild olive tree, Rom. 11.13, 17, not to be high-minded or their salvation opportunity during God's dispensation of grace to them would be cut off, Rom. 11.22, with the rapture of the believers in the body of Christ. 23, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient, all things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Paul is teaching the Corinthians how to think as they use their liberty and grace. He gives basic principles but never puts them under the law. 
Under grace, he has the liberty to go up to the temple and eat food offered to idols, but that would not advance God's desire to edify others. 24. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Paul summarizes the weaker brother principle. Cain asked the Lord, am I my brother's keeper? Paul said we should be concerned with enriching others with true wealth at the JSOC. 25. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles, that eat, asking no question for conscience sake. 26. For the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. 27. If any of them that believe not bid you to a feast, and ye be disposed to go, whatsoever is set before you, eat, asking no question for conscience sake. Paul will now give some very practical advice. Eat whatever you buy at the meat market booths without asking where it came from and take it home and enjoy it. The earth is the Lord's and all the food it produces. PSA 24 colon 1 If some unbelievers have you over for a meal eat what they serve. There is no rule that we should not eat certain meat, but out of love for someone whose conscience is weak, we should not eat it. James asked the Gentiles that had turned to God to abstain from idols, fornication, and things strangled, and from blood, Acts 15 verses 19 to 21, so the Gentiles could save more Jews into the body of Christ. 28. But if any man say unto you, This is offered in sacrifice unto idols, eat not for his sake that shoot it, and for conscience sake, for the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. 29. Conscience, I say, not thine own, but of the other, for why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? But if anyone says that the food was offered to idols, do not eat it for his weak conscience sake. For there are plenty of other things we can eat since the earth and all its produce belongs to the Lord, not Satan. You could wound his weak conscience by your knowledge and strong conscience that what we eat does not matter. For the reason of saving and edifying souls, we may not want to serve our Jewish guests pork chops or bacon. Everyone's conscience judges themselves, so no one should be judged by another man's conscience. 30. For if I by grace be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of for that for which I give thanks? Paul asked if I partake of some food, why should someone speak evil of me for eating what? I have thanked God for 1 Tim 4 colon 1 6. Food is nothing, what Christ has done is everything. 31 Whether therefore ye eat, or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Whether you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all for His glory. It glorifies God when we care about how our conduct may affect our weaker brother. 32 Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the Church of God. 33 Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. Do not offend anyone, but seek to please everyone in all things. There were three kinds of people in the world at the time of this letter, lost Jews, lost Gentiles, and the Church of God, Paul's group and Peter's group. Today, there are saved and lost. If we do not follow Paul as he follows Christ, then we are not following Christ. Paul did not seek his own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. NKJV verse comparison chart promotes works slash progressive salvation, NKJV. Imitate Christ faithfulness, 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1, Romans 3 verse 3, Romans 11 verses 30 and 32 disobedient, disobedience. Revelation 19 verse 8, righteous acts of saints, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 18, are being saved, 2 COR 2 15, are being saved, Ephesians 2 verse 8, have been saved, how the NKJV supports new age ideas. NKJV, works salvation, Matt 7 14, Galatians 5 verse 22, 1 John 5 verse 13, difficult is the way, faithfulness, may continue, to believe, Ackel 5 20, progressive ages slash evolution, 1 COR 1545 God keeps him busy Matt 1232 Ace to come Matt 1339 Eastern Time All End of the Age Acts 15 verse 18 From eternity Adam became a living being KJV Followers of Christ faith Not believed unbelief Righteousness of 
are saved, are saved, are saved. KJV. Narrow is the way fath, may believe, God answereth him, world to come, end of the world. From the beginning of the world, Adam was made a living soul. Note, the NKVJ ignores the Textus Receptus over 1,200 times. Chapter 11 Christian Order and the Lord's Supper 11.2-16 Paul praises them for remembering him and keeping his orders 11.17-34 Paul praises them not regarding the Lord's Supper. 11.1 Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. If you do not know that Paul is your apostle, then you have not come to the knowledge of the truth. Rom. 11.13 We follow our pattern in doctrine and practice. 1 Tim. 1 15, 16. Christ cared more about others than his own life. Paul preached to the Corinthians for free. He said, limit your liberty for the sake of another, as Christ and he did. Our liberty is limited by love, the motive of our Christian conduct. Like babes, the Corinthians wanted to see how much they could get away with, such as going up to the temple to eat, but grace teaches us that it pleases God when we serve others. The Corinthians did not understand the process by which Christ's Spirit in them helps the Pauline believer to live for him, Romans 6-8, 12 colon 1. The Spirit of Jesus in us energizes us to serve him now on earth in our mortal bodies, Rom. 8, 11. 2. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances, as I delivered them to you. Paul praises the believers that they remember him in all things and keep the orders, commandments, of Christ that he delivered to us, 1437. Jesus sent him to do a job. He found something good to say before trying to straighten out other major problems in the church. 3. But I would have you know, that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Paul then begins to talk about order in the church. Some women were praying in tongues too much, and some men were competing with others for a chance to speak. Paul lays down the hierarchy or chain of command among equals Father God, Christ, man, woman. Jesus said, I and my Father are one, John 10 verse 30, but he also said, My Father is greater than I, John 14 verse 28. Christ voluntarily took a lower place while he was here on earth, Phil. 2 colon 5-7 God's chain of command, authority, is for the sake of order, to eliminate confusion. There were too many chiefs at Corinth and not enough Indians, 415. Every man is not the head of the woman. Paul will make it clear that the husband is the head of the wife. For the sake of Order, in marriage, the wife should allow the husband to make the final decision. A wife is to respect her husband, F. 533 he, in turn, must be willing to die for her, f. 525. As a woman submits to her husband, she practices submitting to her master, the Lord Jesus Christ. She gives him all the glory, for he alone is worthy, and we will praise his name forever. Paul will now apply the headship principle to wearing the customary veil in Corinth. For every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, with a hat or beanie, dishonoreth his head. 5. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head, her husband, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. There should not be anything between a man and God, if a man is covered he dishonors Christ. But if a woman is uncovered, she, singular, dishonors her husband. Paul mentioned that women were praying in the church and prophesying and needed to do so with their heads covered. These were gifts in that church for both men and women. It is interesting that all the 120 men and women in the upper room all received the Holy Ghost on Pentecost, Acts 1 verses 13 and 14. Prostitutes in the immoral city of Corinth did not wear a veil announcing their availability for sinful pleasures. Therefore, to appear later like the women should wear veils, shawls, in church. 6. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn, but if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. Although it is not customary in our country to wear veils, in some countries veils are considered modest apparel for women to show respect to their head, their husbands. As ambassadors that represent Christ, 
what we wear and how we conduct ourselves should honor our ultimate head, the Lord Jesus Christ, F. 523. Paul said if a woman did not cover her head she might as well cut her hair, but if it is a shame for a woman to have her hair cut or head shaven let her cover her head with a veil to distinguish herself from the prostitutes out of respect for her husband, to show submission, as was the custom in Corinth. The priestesses at the temple to Aphrodite were essentially prostitutes that had shaven, bald, heads or shorn, short hair, and did not wear veils like the fine ladies. 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. Moses covered his face with a veil so that the people of Israel would not discover that the glow of his face, that he received when he spoke with God, was fading away. X. 34,33-35, 2 COR. 3 colon 7, Hebrews 8 verse 13, But when Moses spoke with God, he uncovered his head. Paul says men should not cover their heads. There should not be anything between a man and Christ. The wife brings glory to her husband. 8 for the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. 9 neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. The woman was made to be Adam's help meet, Genesis 2 verses 18 and 22. Both were made in God's image, Genesis 1 verse 27. The woman was made to complete the man, to make his life richer, fuller, and more exciting. No man is complete without a woman except in special cases when God has given special grace to a man to be single for a special work, as Paul said in 7 colon 7. Apparently, some of the women in the church at Corinth were saying, since all things are lawful for me, therefore, I won't cover my head with a veil. Paul says that since the veil is a sign of submission to their husbands and to God in the culture at Corinth, the women in the church should wear the veil. But Paul does not apply that custom to other churches. However, Paul does say elsewhere that women should dress modestly, 1 Tim 2,8-10. Peter also wants women to dress modestly and he said that the husbands should treat the woman as the weaker vessel, like fine porcelain china, 1 Peter 3 verses 1 to 4, 7. Women are weaker physically, but wives and mothers have to have stamina because childbearing is very painful and childrearing is difficult work that requires immense strength. The responsibility of raising a family requires great self-sacrifice. 10. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Angels are another reason why women should wear a veil in Corinth. F. 3.10. Women are to know their place in the assembly in marriage because the angels are watching their conduct to know if they honor their husband's authority with submissive respectful behavior and modest clothing. 11. Nevertheless neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man, in the Lord. 12 For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman, but all things of God. The woman was made from Adam's rib, Genesis 2 verse 22, but the woman gives birth to the man. All things are of God. The man needs the woman and the woman needs the man. We both have strengths that we bring to the marriage. We are one flesh, one team. The Lord said the same in Matthew 19 verses 4 to 6. 13. Judge in yourselves. Is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Judge for yourselves. Is it attractive or elegant for a woman to pray unto God without being in subjection to her husband by wearing a veil? Paul does not think that it is laid alike for the woman not to keep the Corinthian custom of wearing a veil. A woman who is teaching a Bible class or praying should do so modestly dressed which respects her husband, herself, her Lord, and God's word, the Bible. 14 Doth not even nature itself teach you that, if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? Most male animals have short hair, with a few exceptions like the lion. Men should not dress like women and vice versa, Deuteronomy. 22 5 For Israel, the Nazarite vow was an act of consecrating oneself to God. Number 6. It was symbolized by long, uncut hair. This meant that a Nazarite was willing to bear shame for God's name. Even at that time, long hair on men was considered shameful and made the man look like a woman. 6 9. Because of this verse, I believe Jesus had short hair. Unfortunately, many paintings show him with long hair. In many ways, long hair on men is a sign of rebellion and is narcissistic. Think of Absalom, 2 Sam, 
18 colon 9 dash 14. 15 but if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. Paul now says that if a woman has long hair, it is a glory to her and that it is her covering. 16 but if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. Some men may seem argumentative and insist on having long hair and not uncovering their heads in church. Paul said that he has not made specific rules for the churches in connection with hair length or dress, head covering. Christ's sacrifice for us is what is important, not our hair. Every time a sinner is saved, Christ is robbing Satan of another soul that will sit with him in heaven, f. 2 colon 6, Colossians 2 verse 15. Christ continues to defeat Satan by the cross. 17 Now in this that I declare unto you I praise you not, that ye come together not for the better, but for the worse. Paul praised them in 11 colon 2, but now he praises them not due to their abuse of the Lord's table when they came together. Paul says that the Corinthians were congregating for the worse, not the better. They had a meal that preceded the Lord's Supper, the juice and bread. The Lord's Supper, or Lord's Table, was a physical picture of what Christ had done for them. Paul only mentions the celebration of the Lord's Supper in this epistle, but how often does God have to tell us something before we obey? I hope you will say once. We are commanded to remember the day of Christ's death, not the day of his birth. We can individually remember the Lord's death every waking moment, but... Paul is referring to a group activity in the local church. It is something the body of Christ should do together with gratitude because his death for our sins at Calvary is what we all have in common. His death and resurrection are what bind us together. We celebrate it because Christ accomplished our redemption. He was victorious in paying the costly price for our penalty after living a perfect life by dying a perfect death. It was his work, love, and courage. Some churches celebrate it monthly and some quarterly. Since the event took place during the week of unleavened bread, the juice was unfermented. It is called the fruit of the vine, never wine in the four gospels. Paul is concerned about order and unity. They should have come together out of love for each other. 18 For first of all, when ye come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. 19 For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. Paul had probably heard from Chloe's household that there were divisions among them. They were eating in cliques and separating themselves from one another. He said that there must be heresies among them so that the true followers of Paul that follow Christ according to the revelation of the mystery are approved and made known among them. Rom. 16.25 if we do not follow Paul to follow Christ, we will be in heresy, doctrinal error. Remember when Peter and Barnabas withdrew from the Gentiles when certain men from James came to Antioch and Paul withstood Peter to the face? Peter had eaten with Gentiles because he knew that God was not making a difference between Jews and Gentiles in the new dispensation he had begun, but then Peter's actions built the middle wall of partition again, Gal. 2 colon 11-21, 328. By separating himself and eating only with the Jews, Peter was denying that the middle wall of partition was down, f. 2.14. 20 When ye come together therefore into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. 21 For in eating every one taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. When you come together you should be thinking that this is for the purpose of celebrating the Lord's Supper and having fellowship with others, not feeding yourselves. People were bringing their own food and not sharing it with those who were poor and hungry. Some were even drunk. Being drunk is a sin, Gal. 521 F. 518 They were in no condition to remember Christ or the body of Christ. Their conduct showed a lack of appreciation for what the Lord had done for them. 22 What? Have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God, and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. A Paul Paul asks, What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in before you come so you will not be too hungry to wait to eat together? Do you despise other believers and shame those who do not have as much money as you? 
What shall I say of your thoughtless conduct at the Lord's table? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. Breaking bread meant sharing and caring, not every person bringing their own or grabbing food before others. 23 For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. Paul said he received of Lord Jesus the revelation that he also delivered unto them. The wording is similar to 15 colon 3. The same night that the Lord was betrayed of Judas, at the end of the meal, Jesus took bread and broke it and gave it to the twelve. Paul's words are a little different from the four Gospels, Matt. 26 colon 20 dash 29, Mark 14 verses 17 to 25, Luke 22 verses 14 to 21, John 3 verses 18 to 30, dot. 24 And when he had given thanks, he brake it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Out of love, the Lord wanted them to remember what he had done so they could be saved. The Lord had to drink the cup of God's wrath because of all mankind's sins. What the Lord did for us is a cup of blessing, 1016, because without his sacrifice we have no hope. My body deserved to be broken and my blood deserved to be spilled, but he offered his body in my place, 2 Cor. 25 After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. Now that the perfect testator is dead, his will can be carried out. His blood paid for all sins, and his blood of the New Testament then allowed the Father to impute his spirit to two groups, Heb. 10.29.26 For as often as ye eat this bread, and drink this cup, ye do shew the Lord's death till ye come. As often as we eat the bread and drink the juice, we celebrate his death till he comes in the air to catch us up. 27 Wherefore whosoever shall eat this bread, and drink this cup of the Lord, unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Whoever eats or drinks the cup unworthily, drunk and not reverent, denied what the bread and cup represent, making them guilty of betraying the picture of his sacrifice. 28 But let a Man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread, and drink of that cup. A man should examine his own conduct, not Paul, in light of what Christ has done for him. He should be sure to see the picture of Christ's suffering for him in the broken bread and blood-red juice, and then he can eat and drink the cup. 29 For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. The word damnation here is not going to hell, it was being judged wrong and reaping the fruit of their own sinful conduct, Gal. 6 colon 7, 8. Christ has already died for the sins they are now committing. Unworthily, an adverb, refers to their behavior, not them. They were drunk and gluttons at the Lord's Supper. It was unworthy, sinful conduct during the remembrance ceremony for Christ's death for their sins. The Corinthians had a problem with discernment because whoever eats the bread and drinks the juice without reverence and gratitude does not see the picture of his great sacrifice on our behalf. He also does not show love to the Lord's body, the body of Christ, the one bread, and one body, 1017. 30 For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. The Corinthians were spiritually weak and sickly and asleep to the truth of the faith Paul preaches and needed to wake up to who they were in Christ and walk circumspectly. F. 5 colon 14 dash 16 dot 31 For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. When we do wrong, we should judge or correct ourselves. If they would judge themselves to be wrong, then they would not need to be judged by someone else. Paul. We should judge our own conduct so that we do not have to be judged by others, 215, 5 colon 5, and Gal, 6 colon 1, they should have been able to judge the fornicator in 5 colon 5. Paul is speaking of them about correcting their own behavior and the behavior of others, he is not talking about their standing, but their state, conduct. Their standing is that we are complete in him, Colossians 2 verse 10, but they should behave like the saints they are. 32 But when we are judged, we are chastened, of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. 33 Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. 34 And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. 
and the rest will I set in order when I come. God corrected the Jews with physical difficulties, Leviticus 26, Deuteronomy 28. God does not chasten us according to the law today, but he cares about our conduct. We are chastened, judged, by his words of correction in the scriptures which convict us when we read them or hear them from other people. God also lets us suffer the consequences of our poor choices. In this case, Christ is chastening the Corinthians through Paul. He reproved them for the purpose of reforming them. It was a remedial correction of their conduct at the Lord's Supper. Believers are able to admonish each other. Rom 15.14, 2 Thess 3.15, all scripture is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. 2 Tim 3.16, Paul says that when they come together to commemorate Christ's death, they should wait to partake until everyone has the bread and juice. If anyone is so hungry that he can't wait, let him eat something at home before he comes. He will set the rest in order when he comes. God is not intervening physically today. He is working spiritually. We are not given over to our own lusts like the lost world.